everyone, this is Alpha Ali. Welcome back to the channel. Hope everyone's doing okay. So today I'm doing a VOD review. This is actually for a Froggy, and it is a diamond free game and actually a loss. Um, the basic thought I promised myself I would focus more in this game, and I think it definitely paid off. Yes, because I remember in our previous one we were talking a lot about how we were being um there was like certain team fights where we, we didn't see very full focus it's because we were a little bit of a yapper uh, but that's honestly that's fine because obviously you know you're enjoying the game and everything um but i think we definitely talked about how in certain team fights we should like try to kind of keep the comms just the comms and then obviously afterwards we can start yapping and do what we want basically uh, i think it definitely paid off um with my positioning but i definitely had some issues again with my res oh okay we're back back with the res issues um but i think it just comes down to me not thinking of res through properly i also had some issues with my tank as they kept dying and flaming the team and i don't know if i needed to focus on healing them more or if it was something i could help uh because i uh, i felt like i was kind of with them the whole game another issue is oh gosh okay another issue is my valk uh, i think there was some that i had really bad timing so any help would be appreciated all right froggy that is a lot sweet you've given me a, a lot to work with there so I think we will definitely try to focus on like certain little bits basically because obviously I don't want to overwhelm you with um with information basically <laughs> I have problems you don't froggy though because your mercy is absolutely great um so yeah I guess we're kind of like just look into this board see how we can I, I'm gonna maybe focus on your reses quite a bit because it seems like we 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 worked on the reses reses got really good and then reses have gone again so we'll have a look at that basically uh but if you guys want your own board review would you like your own free Mercy VOD review? I do them live on my Twitch on Sundays at 2pm in the UK, but don't worry if you can't make that time, as I also do them offline and upload them straight to YouTube as well. They only cost 7,500 koala moolah, or channel points as they're probably better known, which you can get completely for free by watching like my streams basically. I also stream on Wednesdays, Fridays and Saturdays at around 5.30pm UK, so be sure to hop on over there, get saving, and you can have your very own VOD either shown live on stream or be done offline and just be posted to YouTube afterwards. For more info, do not be afraid to hop into the stream or come and join the Koala Creek Discord and ask one of my lovely mods over there. The link for that will be in the description. Now, back to the VOD. And yes, yeah, so I guess we'll just get straight into it. This is actually my first ever Rose Gold Mercy VOD review as well, so I'm really, really looking forward uh, to doing this. And already as well, I'm already seeing something really, really great already, even before I've started the VOD, which is we're going to damage boost at the beginning. There is, uh, there's a few maps where a lot of people will push up at the beginning to fire um, things that spawn. Really key examples, obviously Blizzard World, Iconwald, King's Row, that kind of stuff. A lot of people will chuck abilities at the spawn door. For example, um, Ash Dynamite, Moira Orb, um, Ryan fire strike um some people as well just want to take a few like little shots before they back off just see whether they can get like a, a little bit of damage in and stuff like that um so yeah so obviously really really great that we're starting off damage boosting this and more orb and then hopefully back out really really soon um so yeah so i guess we'll just get straight into it um i'm gonna start playing so nice we're going obviously straight back as soon as we can very very nice awesome okay so obviously at this point we can't really do anything just we're gonna wait for people to come in Nice heals here. Like with your position right now. I love as well how much you're looking back as well. Nice damage boost onto your uh, Zarya. I'd push up your Zarya here. When 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 you when your Zarya gets this pick off here and you can see that she is quite high charge, push up with her because uh, her obviously she's gonna be quite high charge and we could just like you know start to mow down the team basically we don't need to push in like massively massively with her but what i would do is i'd be looking to kind of push up to like to where this cast is here kind of thing so we can still like be in beam range on the just in case um so yeah so we can still kind of like stay with the zarya and then once she kind of like gets out of that beam range then obviously you know we need to like start helping the cast the issue that we have with our team is that we don't have anyone long ranged to be able to heal and this is kind of one of the issues that we have in moira mercy it's very much that someone has to go out of their way to be able to go and heal people so you see but you have to go in and like do like a quick little like ga sling to get yourself here and then come back or your moira has to use her fade to be able to get in and then obviously you know help the zarya basically so it's just something to really, really you know be mindful of basically because you know obviously she's going to be out of um out of the range but we'll keep it going hopefully she just end up being mowed down here nice nice heals here nice so we heard we heard here i'd be pushing forward here the reason uh, like staying kind of with your zarya as much as possible the reason is because we heard our moira say i cannot heal you yet when moira says that line that means that she's completely out of heals so if she what's it called if she doesn't have her orb or anything then obviously you know 
she can't heal so we need to make sure that we're kind of taking in charge of the healing there just until we can see our Moira's dps quite a bit because it's allowed her thing to regen um so yeah so we just want to try and make sure that we're just staying up with these guys because we heard that voice learn of i can't he heal you yet and we want to try and go forward and keep healing here but nice nice focus around the side that's fine obviously you know you're having to stay with your zari a little bit here nice all right at this point i'd be looking to start backing out a little bit which i'm hoping your team is going to start doing but it said they've just started to be like really really aggressive don't be afraid to put your beam onto your zari here as well um because i know obviously that cast is going to be your main blue beam but when you see your cast reload or if it's you know a little bit further back like here for example because when cast is kind of like at this range it's true it's going to be effective but with your zaria having like such um what's it called such a, a high charge because what let's have a quick look at her charge oh she's at 100 charge right if you stick a blue beam onto this sorry right now she is just going to melt people like they are just going to just go in an instant basically just purely because she has got such high charge the reason why i know this and a reason why i'm really really for damage boosting um zarya's is because i play a lot with zeldris zeldris is a uh, main zarya so i know a lot of the time when zarya's will want to kind of like walk in and do stuff basically do this with your zarya right now because zarya has such high charge she's near her grab as well like if she can get this grab off really really quickly bam that's like once again another really easy team fight win and they've hardly built any ultimates up okay so don't don't be afraid to push up with Zarya is all, all i'm trying to say right now because she's like being very aggressive nice obviously heals to get her out though nice sling make that a little bit make the sling a little bit more direct so we're going completely behind this pillar but when that really really great like the rotation they've used window nice we need to start backing out a little bit now nice nice as soon as your ga comes back online we want to back up to point here okay because what's going to happen is these guys are just going to really start walking it walking it down main with the window that's that's happened basically so i'd be looking so this this is this is a fine ga to be able to to come over to here but then as soon as you have your j back on we need to be backing off even looking to use the cast as a sling if we can get los of the hanzo that's even better because then we could just do a straight ga over to here basically but we just want to try and make sure that we're backing off to point here because they're going to start pushing in uh they're going have ultimates you know coming up as well like for example uh they've got um bob coming up as well i've been thinking as well they're gonna be coming up to flux as well as well so i just be kind of looking to back off to a point as soon as possible a little bit sooner there but so good i'll see what we end up doing nice nice damage boost onto the cast high noon it makes as well kind of say i've not i don't see this is the first time that the cast changes have been in a vod i love how stupidly fast this 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 guy walks as well now during his ultimate it's so so funny but we keep it going nice res instant nice very nice love the insta res there very very nice and it's very very clear to me as well that you had your escape route i love this the reason why i want to insta res here is obviously these guys are all stuck in the grab we obviously we don't want other people to be able to push up so this is really really great that we can just essentially just um quickly do that res and then just straight out very very nice very good res uh, i noticed in that game that how fast he was walking is so funny genuinely nice of the coalescence oh okay let's talk about this bit let's quickly rewind it so this is fine obviously you know helping our zari out as much as possible she ends up falling unfortunately but we go for the insta res which is exactly what we should do and then we back off which is completely fine so we get hit with the ult why are we slinging out here we don't need to if we're safe stay in that space okay yes the ultimate hits us right but we have to remember we're underneath a really really good piece of cover here so all we have to really do here is just kind of walk off to the side because a is doing this ga especially because um sigma has his flux up if we ga well you know we don't know where the sigma's flux is going to be then we what's it called 
they're gonna lift up into the air, boom, 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 bam, down, you're dead, okay? So, we want to try and just save our GA and play under this, underneath this cover. The other reason as well is because this Alari is, you know, gonna have a really bad time trying to get LOS of us, because, okay, let's be the Alari, what, which one's the Alari, like, over here, right? If we're the Alari, right, we are playing down in that corner from where that Alari is, right? So she's gonna really struggle to be able to get LOS unless she really pushes forward. We have Cass then to be able to protect us because obviously, you know, Cass will start shooting the Alari if she if she tries to come to attack us while we're down in that corner, basically. So if we need to, just obviously what I would do in this scenario is I would just save my GA and just kind of stay here. If we do want to GA though, we have to be really, really mindful of where we want to GA to, okay? Your best bet if you need to GA here is to GA up on top of this building here. Because you end up GAing over to here. And we end up dying to these guys, okay? Because we know Ash took the high ground from our res earlier. So we can't, obviously, you know, we don't want to be in this LOS. But also, like, you know, where, where can the enemies attack from? They can attack from the side. They can attack from this doorway. They can attack up here. And they can also, obviously, attack from the this angle as well, which is obviously where these guys are coming from. So we have a pretty much a really, really good um, kind of fall that, you know, these guys are going to, you know, the DPS are going to be coming from this side. So if we can't, if we need to rotate here, we need to rotate up to the top and behind this boat. Because then not only can we stay in beam range of all these guys, we're also blocking our LOS of these guys. All right, but we keep on going. So then, unfortunately, yeah, we do end up getting taken out. I like the little crouch man because obviously, you know, you realize that you're in a bad spot. You try to kind of make up for it. It's all good. We just need to make sure that we're making a better rotation if we can, though, basically. So we keep on going. So it's having my drink as well while we're doing it. We have our Valk. See if Zarya stays up. Yeah, Zarya's gone. That's just a, a reset back out. Go again. We do have a Sombra now as well, so it means that we're not really balancing our beams between our DPS anymore because we can very much just leave Sombra to do their own thing. Just make sure when we're doing these GAs that we're GAing ourselves to these pieces of cover. We don't want to be hanging out in the open uh, a little bit, but that really, really great. Nice. Nice. No issues here because obviously you know you're just playing with your your soldier i would love for your soldier to come up to the high ground like at this point i would love it if your soldier decided to rotate up i don't know why he isn't all right nice j forward though nice damage boost onto the um nice damage boost on to sorry i don't know what if I was, i'm saying healing i've i've got so confused because i said damage boost uh, uh, yeah, no, nice healing obviously onto the sombra as soon as uh, the sombra comes out i just want to quickly talk about hold on skip it forward a tiny bit this bit in a second so th this is nice this is what i meant nice obviously get into your your beam onto the sombra and then as soon as she goes away nice heals why are we crossing here why are we crossing here because we we don't know this is safe we're now doing a res sorry we're not doing a rest we're now doing a ga across a window which you know we don't want to do we want to try if we can as soon as we know that there's there's a window we stay out of it okay i would literally as soon as that as soon as we hear that window come out we know it's gonna be main so if you can try to come to this side here we can get our beam onto azari here or we can also still reach our beam onto the soldier as well we don't want to be taking these risks though to do these rotations if we desperately need to this rotation let's say we had someone coming up from the high ground like say say the cast went for a flank and was now up on the high ground and we have to do this rotation we need to do this looking down and away like this if we look down and away like this as we're doing this rotation it makes it slightly less risky because we're blocking our head hitbox and we're also like you know we're going to avoid taking headshot damage from these guys in this window it means then all they can hit is our body because we're trying to tuck our head away like this and then we're over to here basically all right but we keep on going We don't have it. What we could do as well, we can pop Valk a little bit sooner than what we did. Because if um because if if we feel like we need to connect our beams, but we can't rotate because of the window, pop your Valk, okay? We can pop our Valk, try to kind of keep everyone sustained. It means then some people can like kind of keep their positioning. Like maybe Zari could back off to this um this doorway instead of having to walk all the way across as she did, basically. We could definitely just kind of like stay stay back here if we desperately need to. Uh, and also, it'll just give us a better, like, good range of uh, the team fight and everything. So, if we needed to, we could also pop that up there. Alright, we keep on going. 
Nice. That was a bad look down and away. Nice, Rez. Nice. Just unfortunate that Zara, uh, Zara isn't falling there. You did your job, though. You did that really, really well. Love that, Rez. Obviously, you know, because we wanted to try and, like, make sure we're, we're keeping our team up, trying to keep that contest happening. Love the damage boost and healing that you did on the Zarya there. Absolutely no issues. It was just unfortunate that your Moira just faded faded away. Like, your Moira was fine to stay where she was. But so good. We ended up backing ourselves around, which is completely fine. Nice. So look at it all. So we have ourselves our visor coming up. So I tried to stay with Soldier, which is exactly what you're doing. Just try if you can to stay on these stairs a little bit longer. Um, because you end up kind of like just coming up here and like hopping about with the vise like this. Like, yay! I'm damage boosting a soldier visor. Dum -de -dum -de -dum. And can you see how like we've opened up this entire like opening to us like taking some damage? If we can, just stay on the stairs. Stay on the stairs as long as possible. If we need to look at our team, we can look at our team like this through the walls. We don't need to be peeking this at all. We can just literally just sit here and just help soldier with his visor, okay? So we could just kind of like stay on the stairs. Now, you end up cheating away here. Oh, it's for the res. Okay, that's fine. That's main. Nice. As we're doing this, keep make sure they're keeping an eye on, on the Zarya. Because it's all good, you know, you're trying to have a look onto this. Woo, I'm in the map. Um, it's all good, you're trying to have a look onto this high ground, like, to see whether anyone's up there. But who 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 is going to be up there? Because you've already got the ash. You got the ash with the visor. So out of these guys, who's who's gonna be up there? Because, you know, you're we know that the high noon is main. Oh, if you thought it was above it? Oh, okay. Yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> the cast is already right above me. No, the the cat the cast is main. Because, and as well, you should know this as well, because you took that little peek as well. You know, when we were peeking up here as we're doing the visor, like, dum -de -dum -de -dum, like this, okay? We knew that the cast was down below because the cast wasn't up here. It was under the ash. We obviously got rid of the ash. We got rid of the pile and everything as well. So we're, we, we know that this, this high ground is safe. So we don't, we don't need to be kind of like looking up there. Instead, I would just be kind of like vibing here with my soldier, keeping an eye on my Zarya as well, because it might be the beauty to a small like little G8 in and out to try and help our Zarya, okay? But um, no, I can fully understand why you thought he was up there. But yeah, we, we know that he's not going to be up there from when we peaked earlier. All right, we keep going though. Nice. Nice. I would be thinking our Zarya is quite high charge now. So don't, don't be afraid to, if you need to, push up with your Zarya here, okay? Your Zarya's going to be really high charged because obviously she's going to use her bubbles um, against uh, the cast and everything. So I believe that she's going to be quite high charged. Do not be afraid to just sit there and damage boost her for a second and wait for your soldier to take this high ground, okay? Because what's going to happen is you might just end up obviously taking a good couple of seconds to be able to, you know, rotate up to here with your soldier and then you're out of the team fight, okay? We want to try and have as little people out of the team fight as possible. You want to try and stay with the Zarya here, be damage boosting the Zarya while these guys are still quite up close to the Zarya. So it means that we can, you know, damage boost. And then once we get LOS, of the soldier or we know the soldier's up there we can then either use our zarya to get up there or we can obviously j straight to the soldier depending on you know positioning wise basically so yeah so if you can try to stay you know involved in the team fight as much as possible be damage boosting your zarya up until we know that the soldier's up there just to be able to get as much beam you know i guess usefulness out of the team fight as possible um can you get back to you there we are Sorry, I'm still trying to get used to doing the VODs on PC. Nice. Love that. I love how you did not panic here to be able to go go down to go and help the Zarya, okay? Because obviously, you know, we know that the, the Moira is with our, with our, what's it called? With our Zarya. And we've not heard the voice line to say that she's low on healing. She hasn't said anything to say that she's low on healing, okay? So this is really, really nice that you just allow your Moira to heal up the Zarya. There's also no need for you to risk it. You know, you can help the zone people with the damage boosted soldier. Very, very good game sense here, Froggy. Absolutely love that. And I loved until you waited for the Zarya to peek you to be able to go and heal her. Very, very nice. Very good game sense there. All right, we keep it going, though. Nice. Nice, we had to obviously pistol a little bit because our soldier's not in LOS. And yeah, that's just going to be a team fight lost. All good. 
It's just unfortunate that Zarya ends up um, dying when, you know, she's being very, very aggressive with your Moira, but it's all good. Nice J way. We have an honor now. Perfect. I was waiting for an honor. This is going to help you so, so much because it means that you're not going to have to be constantly kind of like hopping in and out as much as you would have been because obviously, you know, you, you now have a longer range healer and a shorter range healer. So you can very much stay with like these guys hopping in and out you know every once in a while when you can i also feel like it it, w it won't be obviously more healing because you know um more you know more does more healing than honor but it would definitely feel like it if honor's hitting some really really good nades onto these guys because they have nothing to cleanse these nades or anything it's gonna be quite hard for them if they end up getting these nades all right keep it going though nice j back obviously try if you can to make that as long as you can that's fine. Obviously, you know, you're having to keep the Zarya up. Woo! Ooh, okay. Let's talk about this. Let's talk about this. Okay. Back out a little bit more. Bad res coming up? Yes. Why? You know what, Froggy? I'm going to ask you first. Why is this a bad res? Because there's two reasons why this is a bad res. So this is all fine. This is fine. Because obviously, you know, we're trying to keep the Zarya as much as possible. I would not valve this, first of all, to start off with. This is this is its own issue. I'm not going to talk about the rest just yet. Um, the reason why I'm going to say this is a bad valve is because there isn't really anyone to follow up on this EMP. This EMP is slightly too early. The reasoning is because your soldier isn't back yet fully. And, you know, our Zarya is not, like, kind of pushed up into the team a little bit more. Um, so, yeah. So, um, your reasons for the res... I'm uh, sorry. Uh, so the enemy team is older and she can come back quickly. Yes, Froggy. Exactly. I don't even need to say it. I don't even say it because Fro Froggy said it for me, okay? Yes, we do not we don't need to rest here, okay? Sombra has used her main thing, which is her EMP. EMP is obviously massive, and she's already used her EMP. So is there anything that this Sombra can now provide to the team fight, especially because she's uncovered herself and, you know, she's ended up having to use a translocator and everything, right? She is now basically a sitting duck and you've done your absolute most to try and keep her up here, which obviously, you know, you popped Valk for us. That's, you know, so, so helpful for you. But yeah, I don't want to rest, but the parasites um, in me want to rest. <laughs> so, Froggy, what I want you to do is when you get into scenarios like this, okay, I'm going to be you. Okay, we she we see that she gets absolutely annihilated. Not many people took damage as well. We know that from our beams and everything. Because obviously, you know, we didn't hear any of the damage boost coming through. We didn't really hear too much, basically. So we know that these guys have not taken a lot of damage. They're not going to be backing out. They're going to be wanting actually to push forward. Because they think, oh, that's such a way to BMP. And they're going to start coming forward, okay? So, what do we do here? We think, oh, Sombra, that was a bad EMP. G A T or harder and then like you know try to help maybe get a pick or something basically because we we want to try and make sure that reses are as safe as possible we don't want to make sure we're dying for res unless if it's absolutely necessary but also i'm very very he hesitant to res people that are like sombras and traces and stuff like that and ball as well because they have such good movement abilities so they can get back to the team fight very very quickly if they need to okay Sombra, you silly goose. Anyways, no, for real. Because it's like, you know, you you, can, you cannot correctify this because of how it is. I like how you try going into the room for the res, so I will be honest. Like, it's very, very clear to me that you want to try and get the res off as safe as possible, so you go into the room. But yeah, this is just very much a death wish way to happen, bless you. Um. Oh, she looks so sad on the floor. But it's good. I mind my damn business next time. It's just mainly just looking to see whether we desperately need to go for that res and whether it's going to, you know, have any impact to the team fight. And right now, I feel like if you... Remember, you don't ask me. You don't need to res, like, straight away. Like, obviously, there will be times where it's, it's best to res straight away. But other times, you know, we could just sit it out. We can just sit and damage boost others. And then we can look for that space to be made so that we can go and res, okay? Let's say we kept our Zarya up and our Zarya was still really, really high charge. You know, she can provide that really good space because everyone's gonna be like oh my gosh hi Zarya, and they're gonna start walking out at that point if you want to you can go for a res all right but we keep it going nice your ash should just go back into spawn here by the way to get the health back or she coach guns over to you like the you don't need to be kind of like going desperately for her nice of you you do end up doing a nice little ga cancel to be able to get to her after that Nice as well playing your distance with the soldier. Ooh, okay. 
Okay, let's talk about this. Let's talk about all this. Sorry, we, 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 talk, we talked about the ash. This is absolutely fine because you're doing the absolute right thing and going in and trying to help. This is not on you. Sorry, I just have to quickly rewatch it. This is not on you. Your diva decides just to use all of her boosters to then just stand out in the open like this and she's just going to take so much damage. Also because your ardor isn't back yet. This is not on you. This is on your diva. Your diva just didn't do the right play here. Your diva, because bring as well, you don't need to desperately need such a point here as well because obviously, you know, the, the payload's here. The payload's not like here so we're not desperate to touch the point here it's very much your diva can literally you know just fly through maybe open a dm for the visor you know because we need to try and enable our team with our dms that are open uh you can go and sit here and dm the visor and the visor can just like go through this is absolutely not on you the the diva just decided just to go in for whatever reason so that's not on you i'm gonna see how you guys end up playing with that okay and then we end up flying into a flux let's quickly talk about this bit as well okay we should know from our ult tracking that they're going to have these two ultimates up, okay? Because, you know, they used high noon the last team fight. They used window when they were coming through. And we know that they used Bob recently as well, okay? They have not used these two ults in a hot minute, okay? They've not used a L'Oreal since, I believe, first point, I'm going to say. Because I don't think they used one at second point. And same with Flux as well. They've not used that since first point, okay? These two ultimates we know desperately are coming up because they've not used it for us in entire duration here so we know these ults are definitely coming up so what would i be doing as a mercy when i know that these two ultimates are coming up i would be making sure that i'm staying kind of at max beam range as much as possible and playing my cover to make sure that it's going to make Alara's life you know so so hard to be able to get to you because the same one's easy the second one you could just play out of out of you know out, you know out of um i guess like just at beam range basically and then when he goes for that flux, we can G ourselves out of it, basically. With a L'Oreal, obviously, you know, it's a little bit harder. We just have to make sure that we're playing that max beam. And we're playing somewhere like how we are right now to be able to play out of LOS of it, basically. So we can just stay where we are, okay? Let's quickly keep playing. So Diva will go in and do her thing again. We don't need to G in here. Okay, if we want to GA in here as well, because wh where is your GA going as well in general, can I just say? Because if, let, let's let let's say the flux isn't going to happen, okay? Let's say the flux is just going to go up, okay? Well, no, sorry, let, let, let's, let's say the flux isn't here. Where, where are we ga into, okay? So we're, we're GAing forward. Are we just going to GA to here? Because in that case, we've opened up all these angles to everyone, okay? If we need to GA forward to our soldier here, we need to GA and come to here. The reason is because this is going to be your safest spot to be able to unpocket this visor, okay? But at the same time, we don't want to risk our life for this pocketed visor, okay? Remember, we have this ash. This ash is going to take a really, really nice um, off angle as well to be able to shoot these guys, okay? So if we need to, we can just allow the visor to go main. We have our honor to be able to help the soldier as much as possible, either to sleep one of these guys or be able to heal, you know, through the visor with him. Your ash is going to this really, really lovely off angle. Go with your Ash, okay? Allow your Ash to get maybe a really good dynamite off. Maybe get a few picks in this backline or something. But what I would be doing here is I'd be going with the Ash. Because then it means that we're, you know, when we know that these two ultimates are coming up, we're going to be playing the split. Because then, you know, we can go to GA to our soldier. If the, let's say the Alara was to come onto us, then we can use our GA to get over there. If the Alara was to come to us, we can use our GA and push up with our Ash or something, basically. We just want to, you know, not go into the soldier here unless if we desperately need to, okay? I would play off to the side with the ash like this. Uh, but it's a keep it going. Obviously, you end up dying with the flux. I love as well how you know exactly where your escape is going to be on the just in case because we want to try and fly to this ash if we need to. Um, your diva ends up falling, unfortunately, and I feel like you guys are just going to getting rolled now, unfortunately. But it's all good. Overall, Froggy, so far, it's been quite good. Apart from that one really bad res, uh, the majority of it is it's just like some bits of positioning, okay? It feels like there's just certain points where we're not kind of like doing either as like strict a positioning as we need to, or we're just doing GAs into the open, okay? I want you to really just, you know, still be bearing in mind your positioning if you can, and make sure that we're not just GAing ourselves out into the open as much. But it's so good, we keep on going. Uh, we have ourselves a Widow now, and your tank hasn't picked... There's probably your tank um, crying right now.
That's fine. You can't you can't do anything right now, unfortunately, while you're waiting for a tank. You do have one now, which is great. Yay! We finally got a tank. It took us 30 seconds, but we got one. <laughs> That's fine. Nice sir, bunny hop here, by the way. Our James are going a bit wonky, but that's fine. Widow ends up falling. Nice. Make sure that we're pinging this res, by the way, just to kind of let your team know. Because they obviously don't know that you're going up to res this, um, this Widow. This wid this res on the Widow is very, very nice. Love your positioning with it. Love your timing on it as well. Just make sure that we're pinging it, especially because our Kiriko is really, really weak. Okay? We want to make sure that our Kiriko does not peak because, you know, why not? I did ping, I swear. Do the pings not show up in replays? Because this show that's fair enough. Ooh, okay, Widow. If we need to go and help this Marga, just GA, GA here. Because we know that this Widow is here, so why do we keep on peeking this angle, okay? Because we're playing here, like this, with the Marga. Okay? And then we're just constantly peeking this Widow like this, okay? So, if we know the Widow is here, what do we do? Well, we can use one of these guys. Use one of these guys to rotate ourselves to come to this stall here. Yes, it means that there's only going to be two of you on the point to be able to cap it. But I would rather you didn't take the risk of peeking the Widow and rotate over to here to help your Marga than obviously be trying to peek. Because then that means as soon as, obviously, these guys start pushing in, I'd then look to rotate away because, you know, we don't want to get hooked by the Hog. So, maybe if the Hog wants to come to us, we bait, bait Hook and then we go forward. Um, but we just, we just don't want to be playing this angle here because we're just jiggle peeking into a widow, okay? And we don't want our head just to be taken off by us doing this, okay? Rotate round here, go for a safer bit of positioning just for the time being and go to help our Marga out a little bit more. All right, we keep on going. Nice rotation, obviously, to help your widow. Nice flick onto the blue beam as well. I love how as soon as she gets up there and she starts scoping, you immediately go for that damage boost because she's looking for a quick shot. Very, very nice beam management there. Nice, obviously going to go and help her as well. Nice, she managed to get the um, soldier as well, which is really, really great. Very, very nice. We don't need to Valk here. We don't need to Valk here. Let me quickly rewind it. So this this is all fine. This is all good. This is nice positioning. Just be able, you know, to what's called to play where you are and everything. Very, very nice. Obviously, we're going to put a push up with your Marga. Okay, it's this bit. We don't need to Valk here. Because who, you know, we've, we've already got a really good pick, okay? We've actually got an insane pick here. Because we've got the, what's called, we got the Alari. Second thing as well, there is still someone respawning as well. I can't remember who it was. It's, um... Is it the Bab that's respawning as well? If it's the Bab, then you desperately... Oh, no, it's not the Bab. Who's respawning? Is it the Widow? It is, it's the Widow, right. You guys are 5v3 right now. We don't need to Valk. Because, yes, he's using his whole hog, but the, the whole hog is not going to get any picks. Obviously, it does, it does end up flicking the soldier off the map, which, you know, bless him, um... That happens, unfortunately. But it's not going to kill your Marga or anything, is it not? Because your Marga is, you know, your Marga's fine. Your Marga's got a lot of HP. He's also still got the Kiri. You know, you still got Kiri with you as well. And we have a Widow to be able to still, you know, hold main, basically. We do not need to Valk. Because we can still keep up this Marga and be effective by pushing up with him and GAing. And we kind of like just want to use him as our main blue beam. Just purely because our soldiers obviously got off the map, bless him. So don't Valk here. Don't Valk here. We're still in beam range of the Marga. Keep up our Marga and just follow through with him in a second by just GAing with him. Because you're up in numbers. That's his fault for going in as aggressive as he did. Nice how you did go for the res. I feel like you wanted to go for the res, but they realized Hog could hook you and then you end up going back from it. Very, very nice decision making there. My other thing is obviously don't go for it originally if you know the hook's gonna be there but i like how like you realize that as you did it distraction yes i respect it though so good obviously we know hog's gonna be there so that's fine nice i like your position here very very nice damage boost don't be afraid to kind of like yeah i was just about to say don't be afraid to ga up with your widow a little bit sooner because obviously you want to try and stay in beam range with her as much as possible so don't be afraid to push up with her a little bit um sooner basically 
Nice. Nice, stayed away from the ult. Nice, heals on Zakiri as well. What? Okay, hold on. I don't think there's anything you could do here for this Marga, apart from maybe be pushed up a little bit more. When, when you're playing, because I feel like this is something that some Mercy players really struggle with. I'm not saying this is you, Froggy, but I'm just saying, like, in general. A lot of Mercy players struggle to adapt. And what I mean by that is, as the team, oh, so as the game happens, obviously, you know, people change characters. People change, you know, um, who they're going to play. So if, they are, so if the enemy team end up switching, then obviously, you know, we need to try and adapt our play style to you know how the enemy team are playing so let's say they were playing you know they switch from widow to tracer that means that we can completely change up our play style because it means that we don't need to play as hard you know as hard as hard cover uh as much basically because obviously you know we're playing you know there's not gonna be a widow just to be able to take our head off as soon as we pick a corner and it means we could probably play a lot more high grounds and stuff like that because you know it means that you know we can stay away from the tracer so can you see how like you know we could adapt our play style like that you have to kind of do something very very similar with your team because you will realize as you're playing that there will be weaknesses in your team and there will be some people that might need a little bit more extra help now i'm not saying this is your fault at all because your your tank has been very very aggressive however you have to realize to yourself my tank is really really aggressive what does that mean i need to do as mercy I need to make sure that I'm trying to push up and help him as much as possible. Now, that means that, you know, you as long as you have your beam on him and you're trying to heal him, if you cannot physically do, you know, heal out, you know, out heal any of it or anything, then obviously, you know, that's on him. But if we can try to push up a little bit more with him, just to try and make sure that he's going to be okay. Because what ends up happening is he'll run in in a second. So this is fine. I like this bit because, you know, you're playing out of the way of um the Ilarial. This is nice heals on your Kiriko. Right. We end up peeling back here, which is good positioning. Do not get me wrong. But can you see how our Marga is wanting to commit in here? Marga committing in, which me means that these guys are going to back off. Hog is definitely going to back off as well because he's used his hook and he's going to be, you know, he's using his breather right now because he's taking a lot of damage. Push up with your Marga here, okay? Because you can see he's got his little flame thing. He's wanted to run in. So go and push up and go and damage boost him. So it means then that we can maybe try and keep him up. Obviously, he's probably end up going to die with the amount of damage he's about to take. But it still means that the four is still there. Because, we, you know, we could push up with him and we could try and damage boost and just help him out as much as possible. So what I'd be doing is, as soon as I see this Marga run in, go in and go damage boost him and try to keep him up. And you just have to kind of just adapt to how aggressive he's playing. Because us playing back like this, Kiri's healing a fooder and not going to reach, you know, far enough in time, basically. And we're not also there to help him. Now, obviously, it, this is also on him because of how aggressive he's playing. But at the same time, we're also playing quite passive as well. All right, but we keep on going. So Bob's coming in. No, okay, I, I would just back out a little bit sooner here. Like, as soon as you come into this room, we have to realize at this point this team fight's lost. These guys have gone main. Just walk straight, straight off at this point. So I, I'm, I'm going to be you. I'm going to be you. I like being froggy. So these guys are gone. Okay, they're main. They're going to be quite safe now because they can go around the corner. Oh, yeah, I'm back with my team, okay? So as soon as, as soon as we're out of, you know, the LOS of them, I love as well how you don't go and G into them because, you know, the whole hog is, um sorry, the, the bob even. Pretty similar things. <laughs> but we know that the bob's going to be main, so obviously, you know, we don't want to be what's called. We don't want to be Ging ourselves out here, so I like how you don't do that. So if you can, dum, 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 walk over here. All right, keep going though. Uh, it's because you end up getting hooked by the hog in a second. That's how you spot the venom mine though when you go to um destroy it. <laughs> but we keep on going. So just having a bit of my drink as well while you're gone. Nice heals on Samaga here. Well, let's just quickly rewind it slightly. Because I like all this bit. Obviously, we, re we realised that the Widow's main. So, you know, we are just positioning correctively, which is good. Nice heals, obviously, on Samaga because he's playing very, very aggressively and want to try and keep him up. 
nice if we go straight to our ash to be able to you know help her out Your Margo is so aggressive. We notice his Widow's main, so nice rotation. We still know Hog some point. Yeah. This is not a, if if probably if you'll blame yourself for this, this is not your fault. This tank is just like walking main and has not paid attention to what's attacking his back line. So um yeah. He's 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 just not looking around and turning around because you're doing the absolute right thing here. Let's quickly rewind it because I want to talk about how you play. For this entire thing, right? This is oh, the rough. Okay, so you you're doing absolutely fine here. You're doing the absolute right thing, because you know you're you're help you're helping your ash. You've got hooks. Kiri goes in to go and try and help. You then go in to go and try and help, but you know that the hogs behind and you want to try and get out of LOS. So you end up rotating round and then trying to help these guys with the hog. That is not on you, absolutely not, because he's just what's called the, the marker has just walked in and just had no consideration to where, you know, the rest of the team is basically. So that's absolutely not on you. Nice rotation though. Nice, obviously we, we had a Valkin for res, which I don't mind because you guys want to try and keep up this momentum. Also, it's a very, very risky res, so I respect it. Nice, can't do anything for your Sombra there, unfortunately. She's gone in very, very aggressively. I respect all of this because obviously, you know, you want to try and just make sure that people are staying off the, um, off the point and everything. You want to try and push it in with three people. You did the absolute correct decision to make it. For this entire thing, Froggy, this is absolutely perfectly played by you, okay? Loved all of your position throughout this entire thing. Loved the Valk as well to go for the res. Very, very nice. You played that very, very well. Sweet. All right, but keep on going, though. Obviously, just be careful because we know the hogs up above. Love the flicking on the beams for your, um, what's called your Kiriko, though. That's completely fine. And yeah, we'll just wait for our rash to get back. Nice. I'd push up here now. Allow your cute. Yeah, okay, never mind. <laughs> your your marker's gone. Still, we can definitely still go in and we can still definitely go in here. And um, so obviously, you know, try to maybe get our beam onto the marker, but he's just so in so so aggressively. We don't desperately need to be on point here as well, let's be honest, because our Kiriko can push it. Remember, as Mercy, you should very rarely be on the payload unless we desperately need to, okay? My kind of ruling is if I've got like an on or like a bap or a Kiriko, I always try to leave them on the payload, because you know. I, I, I want my damage boost. So I'll go in, okay? We don't need to go in with the Marga, though, because the Marga's been very, very aggressive. But, you know, we can still, excuse me, be pushed up with our Ash a little bit more, basically. Mace looks so cute there. She did as well. I'm glad someone made a comment on that, because, yes, yeah, she did. She looks very, very cute. All right, so we are missing our tank now. So, you know, we have to be very, very careful with how we position. Nice. Like that. What Froggy was doing here, by the way, is we were, we were trying to push the payload as, as far forward as possible. We have our summer trying to protect us, obviously, with against the hog hook and stuff like that. So, very, very nice. You tried to push in as far as possible, then you just backed off. Nice. Because that extra bit of percentage, you know, that'll go a long way in the future. Same thing again. We want to try and sling ourselves forward a little bit sooner here, okay? We want to react to how our tank is playing. Our tank is playing very, very aggressively. So we need to try and correctify our positioning for that. We need to make sure that we're pushing up a little bit sooner than what we have been doing to be able to get our heal beam on. Because, like, try try to... This is going to sound really horrible to this tank, but I'm going to be... It's, it's very, very realistic, okay? Think of this 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 tank as your toddler, okay? And at any opportunity, this... this, this uh, this tank will get, they will run off out of your, you know, your your sights. They will run away from you. They will be constantly out of your, you know, what's it called? Be constantly going away from you, basically. So, they, this this is this is your toddler. And you are looking after this toddler. This not this might not be your toddler, per se. This might be a toddler that you're babysitting, okay? But this, this is your toddler. And we need to make sure that we are trying to keep them up and healthy. And we're trying to, you know, keep... You know how, like, people... This is going to sound really... This is completely off topic now. But, like, you know how, like, um, families have, like, their children are, like, brains. But in mind, I was a child on brains. I was I was a child that was going to, like, you know, wander off. So it, my mum used to have this, like, little um, harness thing, like a little, um, I guess, leave, like a dog <laughs> on me because I was prone to running off. This is what you need to do with, your, with tanks like this, okay? You need to make sure that you're kind of staying with them at all times. You're in this beam range, which I guess is, like, the lead range, I guess. I don't know, I don't know where I'm going with this. But I, what... What I am getting at is essentially we need to try and make sure that we're staying with our tank as much as possible because I'll tell you when you should have GA'd in for them. 
Now, we should have GA'd forward here, because we can play a little bit more aggressively here. We can GA ourselves forward here, because we're still safe here. Diva's, you know, making space, and everyone's playing, like, a little bit back. You know, it's not like they're playing kind of here-ish, they're playing over here. So, we can use our Diva to GA ourselves forward, because then I'm going to be you, right? I'm going to be you. As soon as this Diva starts taking a bunch of damage, we are already there to support our toddler and to be able to heal them. <laughs> That's 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 where I'm getting at with this analogy. I'm really bad with analogies, but that's that's what I'm getting at. But can you see how like you know we're 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 sat back and we're kind of like just looking at some of a toddler that's about to run into the road, like oh no, Timothy, <laughs> you're gonna run into the road. Like we're we're not there to support them. All right, that's that's where I'm trying to get back in uh, this analogy, basically. Ooh, okay. Let's quickly talk about this bit. We don't need to GA ourselves forward to damage this Bob here. This Bob is just going to get absolutely melted down by the enemy team. So I just kind of stay back. I like your rotation as soon as you could though. And then obviously, you know, we do end up getting hooked out, which is unfortunate. We end up backing off really, really nicely though, which is really, really great. But if we don't need to take that risk, just, you know, try not to. Nice heals on Zakiri. It's the same thing again. Try if you can to... um. Try to cancel heal up your diva here. You, I know that you're trying to look for your somber right now, but your somber can easily translocate away and you know just get out basically. So we don't need to worry about our somber. We need to worry about our diva. Make sure that we're trying to heal our diva up throughout this whole hog. She's already used quite a bit of her DM to be able to save you because obviously you know she saved you from uh, this this room over here. So she's gonna not have too much DM left to be able to DM this whole hog. Okay, we want to try and make sure that we're keeping up the diva as much as possible. So try if you can to heal up the diva a little bit more. All right. So the all ends up hitting you. We need to make sure that was a sling out as well if we need to. But yeah. For this entire thing, we just need to make sure that we're staying with the diva a little bit more. Alright, but we keep on going. Nice. We can have our Valk up for next team fight. And also, alt-wise, we know that, you know, they used free ults quite recently. We know that they're probably going to have, like, window and visor coming up. So we need to be careful of that. Dire hit? No, I know. That was like for you. Nice because he used the window. I still know they're going to have visor coming up as well. Nice that was just on the ash because obviously, you know, main blue being targets. Nice. Use this sling with the bob to get yourself closer to your diva because we want to try and keep up our diva. We don't want our diva to use bomb here because we want to try and save it for the next team fight, which should hopefully be as you're kind of capping it in because it'll give your diva a second lifeline. Okay, I love how obviously you know once again you do want to go up and damage with this bob. Don't get me wrong, but use this damage boost onto the bob to get yourself forward to be able to start healing the diva. Okay, because. I feel like we kind of use this to GA just a single, like, damage boost bob. Yay. Whereas in reality, you know, we can use our GAs to be able to help multiple people. We can, you know, we can, we can help multiple people within one GA, basically, okay? So if we want to, in this GA, to go and help damage boost the bob, and then as soon as we see the diva start hitting weak, making sure that we're trying to go and heal her up, all right? We keep going. Nice res. There's a soldier above you guys, or a bat or something, yeah. Nice. Nice. Nice Jay back out. Nice buddy hop as well. I love I love as well Froggy. You're I love just like watching your development as well as of how you played. Like it, this is taking me straight back to like your first VOD when you were constantly using loads and loads of slings and everything. Love how you've already improved so so much and you're using a lot more of these like uh, Jay buddy hops whenever you can. Very, very nice. Nice heals here. Obviously, we have to push up a little bit further. If we need to GA here, make sure that we're GAing down here. I'm hoping you go off this res. Very nice res again. Nice. Just a very, very good visor. We just need to back off and go again here. Nice. Get the pistol as well, just to be able to, just to die quickly. Go again. Reset. Like how you didn't use Valk here as well, because you know that they used a lot of ultimates and everything. Very, very nice. All right, let's keep it going. Let's 
So we can kind of like overwhelm them, I guess, in the next team fight with our um, Kitsune and um, Valk. Don't be afraid here to uh, push up with your, your Zarya because we know that the Hulk's going to start really, really backing up with his uh, breather and everything. We want to try and get as much damage into him as possible. So don't be afraid to push up once again with your, with your Zarya here. Go and damage booster. Nice. L'Oreal. Lovely. Lovely. Let me quickly rewind it because I, I want to talk about all of this thought process because this, this was perfectly played, Froggy. Love this. So, we're playing out of LOS. Sorry, we're playing out of the way of the L'Oreal. Absolutely perfect. So, we're playing, you know, out, out of the way over here, basically, you know, so we don't end up getting taken by it. We pop our Valk as it's going down. So, it means that, you know, we can try and, like, help help our team out as much as possible with the healing. Obviously, we get extra healing in Valk and everything as well. Um, Very, very nice. So, I absolutely love this. We then know that the soldier is probably going to die because, obviously, the pulse and um, the extra damage from the L'Oreal. And you go straight away as soon as it's been as soon as it's gone off for this res perfect very good res here froggy very very nice it's just unfortunate because i love how you tried to go and peel for your um kiriko it's just so unfortunate that your kiriko ends up falling because she ends up getting hooked i'm gonna see what you end up doing here okay don't be a don't be coming to contest the point here, okay? Because it's not like you—it's not like you're in overtime, and it's not like you're like desperate to be able to contest this payload, okay? We've still got forty-four seconds, so there's no point you trying to ga in, in here to do a bit of stall on the point. Instead, use someone just to ga yourself up onto these like high grounds or something, and just up and away for a second, okay? Because it'll allow yourself to regen a little bit, and you can start going in aggressively in your Valkyrie just a second, okay? We don't need to be kind of going in to contest the point here as much as we did. But on that, very, very well played that frog very very nice if we're safe stay in that space at the end of your valk play on this side and play on these stairs the reasoning is because you have protection from your team here we don't have protection from our team here second thing we've opened up an angle because we've wanted to play over here if we ever want to peek with our with our beams now we're opening this angle up here okay However, if we play over here, all we have to do is if we need to change beams, we're out of LOS of these guys. Thirdly, we're very susceptible to flankers from this from this area because people can just, um, you know, attack us from here. And in which case we have to J across and people, you know, followed from the damage, you'll just end up dying. Compared to if you play over here, it's going to be very, very hard for a flanker to be able to come to get to you, all right? So this is why this side is 10 times more superior than that one, basically. So yeah, just if you're safe, stay in that space, okay? There's no need for you to J yourself over to there. Just stay here. Keep your beams up here. Also, you staying over here means that your Kiriko can hopefully get back a little bit sooner. But yeah, I would literally just vibe on these stairs and just play about like this there's no need for you to rotate up here if you need to rotate kind of over to the side then try to do use one of these pillars instead rather than that wall but i understand why you want to obviously rotate everything but nice your zari just walks in front of a window instead of taking cover and surviving keeping yeah that's not on you. Obviously, the the windows there, your Zarya decides to walk forward with the lack of healing that, you know, she has. Because, obviously, you know, your Kiriko is gone and you can only do so much. That's not on you. The Zarya should have literally just bubbled the window to take as much damage as she could and then dropped off the side and you just wait. That's not on you. I'm going to see what you end up doing here, though. So, we end up obviously jaying ourselves away. Vet. Oh. <gasps> Oh, you know what? I saw the vision and I respect the vision. I really respect this vision. Where else was the orb? Let me quickly rewind. I'm going to see where the orb was. Just in comparison. Uh, I have to be on your view, don't I, to see the orbs. Oh yeah, it's gonna be our range, unfortunately. You can see the full process. No, I can see I can see the full process throughout the entire thing. I respect that you want to go for this res. yeah i i respect that you want to go for this especially because of how close it's getting to this overtime and you want to try and get her up quickly i really 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 respect this from you froggy and that's not on you whatsoever like you 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 decided to go and try and help your zari who fed is what it is you did your best sir all good keep on going so we end up backing out a little bit but the other figures we're not probably gonna have uh res for the last oh that's not on you either
Nice. Okay, let's talk about this. Because I, I, I can, I can see, I can see what you want to do. All right. So nice damage boost with the visor. This is really, really good decision making here. I love how you just kind of leave these guys and just go to go and damage boost with the visor because obviously the whole uh, the hog is kind of committing in with the whole hog. So you want to also commit in with visor. Love how you're going up and damage boosting him. Very, very nice. Love this. I respect. This is this is completely the correct decision to make. Okay. We obviously see that Zarya is now starting to get whole hogged away. So we try our best to get our beam on. But also we're still trying to push this payload. Okay. Just when you react to the bat, which is completely fine. Very, very nice. Okay. At this point now, you still have to realize your soldier didn't die. Remember? Your soldier didn't die. Okay. So he's still going to be here ready for this J out if you desperately need to. So what I'd be doing here is as soon as the whole hog has finished, try if you can to rotate behind here. If you can. Or like just kind of ro rotate just to make sure the out of us of the hog because we know that the soldier's still alive so we could ga back to our soldier if we desperately need to we can ga with our kiriko and maybe ga over to like to the throne or something if we need to and allow her to get onto the point we're kind of the other one on point right now so obviously we do have to kind of like stay there for a second but yeah just kind of stay here because what you end up doing now in a second is you end up kind of tunnel visioning to try and get this res up onto the zarya do not worry about this res onto the zarya right now because there's only two people left alive okay because there's only these two people left alive focus your damage boost on trying to clean up them kills rather than trying to go in and trying to to res because we don't need to okay junkrat's gonna be coming back from spawn in a second to be able to help us our soldier and our kira i think are gonna be pretty much enough damage to be able to try and finish this out basically so don't be worrying too much about going for a res here so visor's going off. Nice crouch behind the payload. Nice GA away. And you guys have to cap in it. Awesome. So it's either going to be a draw or a loss now. But yeah. I was trying to get in front of the car. But it kept moving. That's the worst bit. And also it's not a good payload either. Because it's quite a low one compared to a lot of other payloads. So yeah. But as we keep it going. I'm going to see what happens with this hold here now. Looking at it, it looks quite short. When it loads. <laughs> we'll live. We'll, we'll give it a second. There we are. It was just thinking about it. It didn't know what it wanted to show it me. That's so good. Alright, okay. So, keep on going. Like we your position right now as well. It's very, very safe up here. Nice. So, see, we know they've got Widow. So, we want to try and make sure that we're staying out of LOS as much as possible. I'd look to rotate now. Very, very nice. Make that rotation either to here or up onto that high ground. And point proven, okay? A lot of Widows will go very, very aggressively onto this high ground. So it means that they can obviously, you know, shoot down for the point. So if we can, try to either play underneath or I could see what you want to do with this GA. You, you wanted to go up here and you didn't go up here. Go up here. This, because then you can see the Widow. Oh, and then you can either like back off behind or you can like, you know, stay until the Widow like rotates or something like that. But yeah, don't just be a yourself straight onto the point, especially when we know they've got that Widow because that Widow can get some really good sight lines onto us up here. So make that GA under here or up onto there. All right, but keep it going though. Unfortunately, I feel like your team are just going to get rolled over now at this point. Because, I mean, it's not a new as well. Like, a load of your team have also died because the Kiri's died. Your um, Hanzo's died as well. Is what it is. Uh, your sword doesn't get a pick, though. But, yeah. All right. Oh, that was froggy. I'm not going to blame you for this loss. Absolutely not. Because, and you shouldn't do me if you're trying to blame yourself for this loss. The reasoning is because your tank was very, very aggressive. However, I want to talk about what we can do when we have people that are very, very aggressive. And I touched on this a little bit earlier. And it's about adapting your playstyle. And that's going to be my first thing I'm going to talk to you about, Froggy, okay? What I want you to do is when you know that your tank is being very, very aggressive, or you know that someone is being very, very aggressive and needs more of your resources, make sure that you're trying to stay in beam range of them as much as possible and adapt your playstyle. I know that you're so used to kind of like just playing off of your DPS and make sure you're enabling them. But when you have a tank that's taking up, a, you know, a lot of healing, okay, you need to make sure that you're playing a little bit more team centralized and making sure that you're adapting from what you would normally play to how you need to play in this game. Making sure that you're staying up, pushing 
pushed up with him, make sure that we're trying to, you know, keep our beams on him as much as possible and making sure that, you know, if we need to, he's in our beam range because there's been a few times where, you know, he's ended up falling and we could have maybe got the beam on and tried to help, but at the same time as well, they're playing very, very aggressively. So, you know, what can you do about that, unfortunately? Um, other than that, Froggy, really, really great. I will say, I'm going to be honest with you, it's not your reses. I, you said you had issues with reses. You had issues with one res. Um, technically two, but we're not going to touch on, on the other one because I respect the award, okay? The only the only res we ha that I have an issue with is the Sombra one. And the reason, and you, we already know the reasons behind that. You know, you already know yourself. We, we, we talked about it, okay? Your res is not an issue, Froggy, okay? This is completely fine. Reses are perfect, okay? It, it's really, really weird because it's like... um. He said, oh yeah, I feel like my position's got a lot better, but my reses are the issue. Reverse it. Your reses are really, really good, but your positioning is slightly off in a few bits, Froggy. What I mean by this is it's kind of your GAs. You're not GAing with a purpose sometimes. You're kind of like just GAing to what you think is going to be safe from whoever's attacking you. But you have to obviously, you know, compensate for flankers for where other people can attack you from. Okay, so there's obviously a few times where we G ourselves to get away from people. And then we just end up geeing ourselves into like a piece of open space, okay? Make sure that we're geeing ourselves from cover to cover. And we need to try and think ahead and think to ourselves, where can people attack from to make sure that we're staying out of the cover? Um, Valks were really, really great though. I have oh, no issues with your Valks. They were really, really great. Um, Yeah, it was just literally just making sure that you're correct our positioning, Froggy, and make sure that we're adapting to what our team needs of us in that scenario. Uh, but I hope that's right, Froggy, and please do let me know as well if you have any more issues. But thank you so much for everyone on Twitch as well as on YouTube that's watching this. You guys can get your own VOD views. Obviously, I talk about it at the beginning of the video, so go back to that if you need to find that. Uh, but yeah, just once again, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all later. Bye!